Hey everyone, it's Jessie, your friendly neighborhood AMV contest coordinator. And I am here to teach you about AMVs today. This panel is geared mainly towards people who are completely new to anime music videos, but people who are already familiar with them might also learn something new too. So what is an AMV? AMV stands for Anime Music Video. And the name is kind of self-explanatory. They are videos set to music, using footage from anime. Um, there are AMVs out there that will also mix in footage from other sources as well, such as American cartoons, live action shows or movies, uh, video game cutscenes, um, you know, CG animation is still animation. Um, but for the most part, most of the footage should be from an anime in order for it to be considered an anime music video. Uh, there are also AMVs out there that don't actually use music uh, for the audio source. And while these videos probably technically should be considered something else, there, there should be another term for them, they just all get kind of lumped in with AMVs anyways. Uh, other audio sources can include um, trailers, commercials, uh, just recorded dialogue, motivational speeches, all sorts of stuff. Um, MAD is another acronym you might see pop up from time to time, although I do not think it is widely used in America. MAD stands for Music Anime Doga, and Doga is the Japanese term for video, so when you translate it, it, it means the same thing. <laughs> another acronym you might hear about is MMV, which stands for Manga Music Video. Uh, these are essentially AMVs that use still images from manga instead of anime. Uh, even being an AMV contest coordinator for many years, I can't say I've seen a ton of these. Um, they are, I think, a little bit more rare because they are harder to pull off because you're trying to take a still image and stick it into a moving medium. So now I'm going to talk about editing styles, but I don't want to spend too much time on this because um, that's kind of a whole other panel in of itself. Uh, so I'm going to try to really briefly summarize some basic editing styles to give you a sense of what kind of AMVs are out there. Um, I also have listed some AMVs that are good examples of each editing style. These are just examples that I'm familiar with and that I enjoy. There are thousands of AMVs out there. There are tons of other examples uh, that I could have just as easily used in this panel. Um, now, if you do decide to go and watch these videos, because um, most of them are easy to find on the internet, just keep in mind that some of them um, may lean towards the more PG-13 or like teen end of things, so if there's any children watching this panel right now, maybe have your parents preview these AMVs for you first. Uh, from what I have seen as the Torcon AMV contest coordinator, raw editing isn't really used that much anymore. Raw editing refers to just very simple transition and effects. Um, mostly you're just making plain cuts between different video sources without too much fancy stuff. Um, but the fancy stuff, in other words special effects, have gotten more sophisticated and easier to implement over time, so more and more people can use them even if they're a beginner editor. Um, however, raw editing is still an effective way to make an AMV. Um, the AMV Timeless by Hamstar138, for example, won an award at Anime Boston when it premiered, um, despite having fairly straightforward editing. There were a few special effects, but not a lot. Um, effects editing, on the other hand, is kind of the opposite of raw editing. <laughs> there is a heavy use of elaborate special effects. Um, now I have two AMVs listed here as examples, um, and you'll notice that one of them is relatively new from 2018, and the other is quite old from 2001. Um, and if you watch both of these AMVs, you'll see that the word elaborate is kind of relative. Um, the Odori Kuru AMV, the 2001 AMV, was really impressive for its time, um, but by today's standards might be considered kind of simple. And timing editing is a type of editing that relies on syncing cuts with music. This is very, very common. You will see this everywhere. It's, it's kind of hard to resist if you're making an AMV. Um, Hold Me Now is a good example, um, but really it's a common style. You will see lots of AMVs use this kind of style. 
Flow editing relies on transitions to move from one cut to another. This can refer to the use of special effects transitions, so like fancy wipes or dissolves, um, but it can also refer to kind of matching different cuts that have the same sort of subject matter or mood to kind of carry a theme from one cut to the next. Uh, so a piece of toast is a good example of that kind of AMV. Uh, the editor has used cuts from different anime that all kind of have the same subject matter and strung together to give the video a sense of cohesion. Masking is when an editor painstakingly erases the backgrounds from multiple frames of an anime so that you get just one character or an object moving against a completely new background. This is really difficult to do, and in fact some editors will actually share masked cuts with each other or like trade cuts uh, in order to save time so that each of them doesn't have to do the masking themselves. Uh, in fact, in the example that I have here, you'll notice that the AMV um, has had three different editors working together to create it. Um, and it features a ton of anime characters that are all essentially cut out from the backgrounds and pasted over each other, so it looks like they're interacting or reacting to each other in some way. Finally, we have animation editing. Um, animation editing isn't super common. Um, remember when I mentioned MMVs or manga music videos before? They use animation editing the most, probably. Um, it's an editing style uh, where you take a still image and add your own animation to it. So that usually means cutting out a segment of the still image and then using your editing software to move it around artificially. On this slide, I just have some more AMV examples I wanted to give a shout out to because I think they're really good. <laughs> Uh, failed experiments in video editing, while quite old, is still an entertaining watch and uses a creative mix of timing and animation editing. Safety Dance and 8th Grade Goober Syndrome also make really good use of timing editing. Um, and I have to pronounce this carefully. Just Funking Dandy uses both timing editing, but also notably a huge number of special effects. And um, the last two listed here, Anime Master Chef and SPF, both use a lot of masking, so props to those editors. So in addition to different ways of editing footage, AMVs can kind of be classified into broad categories based on how they use the footage, um, or like the kind of creative aspect to them. So the following categories I'm about to go over are just sort of my own mental classification system for different kinds of AMVs. Um, you know, these aren't perfect categories and there's a lot of overlap between them. Uh, so first on here I have lip sync videos. Um, in lip sync videos the editor will try to make it look like the characters are singing the song that the video is set to. Um, so I guess you could say that these AMVs are truly music videos because they do mimic the way an actual music video would look uh, using a human singer. Um, so like in the example I have here, um, Money Shot, it uses the song 24 Karat Magic by Bruno Mars and it makes it look like the character Yato from Noragami is singing the song. Some AMVs kind of tell a story within them. It could be that they're showing you the actual story of the anime that their source footage is from, or they could be creating a new story from scratch. For example, the AMV As We Fall uses footage from the movie Potemmet Inverted. And if you watch it, you'll kind of get a good sense of what that movie is about. On the other hand, the AMV Something Wicked This Way Comes uses footage from the movie Totoro to create an entirely new story. Most of you probably know that Totoro is a cute children's anime, but this AMV retells it as if it were a sinister horror story instead. Trailers are a broad category of AMVs, which, well, look as if they're trailers for an anime. <laughs> uh, some AMVs take the trailer idea very seriously, and the editor's goal is to actually make a legitimate trailer uh, for an anime that they really like. Um, and they'll usually use like thematic music and dialogue pulled directly from that anime. In other cases, though, the editor will use audio pulled directly from an existing movie trailer. Uh, so in the example here, Goku Ragnarok, the editor used the audio from one of the Thor Ragnarok movie trailers, um, but used footage from the Dragon Ball franchise. 
And sometimes the anime and movie trailer used will have something in common. Um, like in this example, Goku and Thor are technically super strong humanoid aliens. Um, but sometimes, however, the anime and movie trailer have nothing to do with each other or are very dissimilar. And then the AMV trailer might have more of a uh, comedic purpose or be more of a spoof. Finally, you get what I have mentally dubbed mashup AMVs. <laughs> These are AMVs that either use a lot of masking or just very clever, carefully timed cuts to make it seem as if anime characters from different shows are interacting with each other. Um, this of course also means that these AMVs often fall into the storytelling category because they're telling a new story between otherwise unrelated characters. Uh, the example I used here, Tainted Donuts by Manic Expression, does have some masking in it, but not as much as you might expect considering how well they managed to blend the characters of Cowboy Bebop and Trigun together. It was made in 2001, so I imagine that creating masking effects back then was even harder than it is today. Now, by this point you may have wondered, is this legal? I mean, AMVs are using straight-up animation and audio that doesn't belong to them. Um, and the answer is a bit ambiguous. Uh, some people might argue that AMVs are protected by the Fair Use Doctrine. Other people would say that they're not. Um, in reality, it might depend on the individual AMV and how transformative it is. As far as I know, there have never been any lawsuits, at least not any that went to trial, involving AMVs before. Um, but in terms of what does usually happen with AMVs, for the most part, Japanese companies seem to ignore them. Um, and American distribution companies, I don't want to say condone AMVs, but they tolerate them very well. Um, for example, uh, American distribution companies will sometimes pressure conventions to have really strict rules and punishments for bootleg anime merchandise sellers, right? Um, but I have never heard of a company pressuring a convention to not have an AMV contest, even though AMV contests are kind of ubiquitous among cons. Um, in fact, in an interview with Anime News Network in 2009, a representative from Funimation stated that they don't really mind AMVs, and in fact, some AMVs can help make potential customers more interested in actually watching an anime. Um, of course, their opinions may have changed since then, and other companies might have other opinions, but, I mean, that's just an example of sort of the attitude that a company might have. The music industry, on the other hand, is much less relaxed. Uh, AMVs are regularly taken down from sites like YouTube for music copyright violations. Although an individual performer or artist might appreciate um, a fan-made AMV, uh, usually their record labels and distributors don't take kindly to the use of music in an AMV, so you'll see DMC notices all over the place from music companies. Now, I would like to talk to you guys about the history of AMVs, but before I do, I think it would help if I explained the difference between linear and digital editing first. So what are linear and digital editing? The two terms are kind of used as if they are opposites, but that isn't quite the whole picture. Video and audio sources, like anime or songs, can be stored on linear or non-linear mediums. With a linear medium, you can only access the data linearly, like sequentially. Uh, so if there's a particular scene from a show you want to watch, um, and the episode is on a linear medium, you have to fast forward or rewind past the other data to get to the part you want. You can't just skip ahead. Nonlinear mediums, on the other hand, do let you skip ahead. So think of a DVD where you can just hit the skip button to get to a particular scene. Um, or if you downloaded your video onto a computer, you could just drag the cursor around to get to any part of the video you want. Uh, or if you had a vinyl record, you could just move the needle to the song you want to listen to, um, you don't have to listen to the rest of the record. Then there's the terms analog and digital. 
Analog mediums use waves to store data. Digital mediums use binary code to store data. I'm not really going to get into what that means because I don't understand it very well myself. Just know that they are different. So what does this mean for editing? When people say linear editing, they usually mean using video and audio sources that are stored on linear and analog mediums. And when they say digital editing, they mean using sources that are both non-linear and digital. So what's the big deal? Why does the difference between linear and digital editing matter? Well, the difference between linear and digital editing matters if you want to understand why the history of AMVs is the way it is. Because if you compare the amount of work you have to do to each one, you'll soon realize that linear editing is really, really hard. Um, to do linear editing, you will need, at barest minimum, a monitor, two VCRs to play your VHS tapes on, a blank VHS tape to record your finished product on. And if you want your AMV to be interesting, you'll also need a big boatload of VHS tapes to take your footage from. Of course, if these pieces of equipment are the only things you have, editing your AMV linearly is going to be tough. So you'll also want to get a deck controller, video switcher, and effects processor if you can get your hands on one. So now you have all the stuff to start linearly editing your AMV. First, put your source VHS tape into one VCR and your blank VHS tape into the other VCR. Fast forward or rewind your source VHS tape to the part you want to be in your AMV. Now play that footage on your monitor with one VCR while recording it onto your blank tape with the other. Plus, record a few extra seconds at the end for good measure to avoid any black spots in your AMV. Now, Carefully rewind your blank tape to be just at the part where you want your next clip to start. This is hard because a lot of VCRs usually only have one rewind speed and that speed is fast. Now pop in your next VHS tape into the other VCR and find the next bit of footage that you want to use. Then keep doing this forever. So now that you can appreciate how difficult linear editing is, we're ready to talk about the history of AMVs. <laughs> The internet seems to agree that the first AMV ever created was a video made by this dude, a guy named Jim Kapostas. Kapostas? Ka Kapostas. Yeah. In 1982. He was, I guess, interested, surprised, impressed by how violent anime could be, and decided it would be funny to take violent scenes from Space Battleship Yamoto with the song All You Need Is Love by the Beatles. I did some digging online to see if it was possible to still watch this AMV, but it appears to be lost footage. It was created using VHS tapes, and the tape it was saved on was either lost or damaged before it could ever be digitized. So in the 80s and 90s, Mr. Jim and other editors inspired by him almost exclusively had to do linear editing. By the 90s, digital technology was just starting to be used by the professional video industry, in other words, Hollywood, but it was still too expensive for most anime fans to get the necessary programs and suitably powerful computers to do digital editing themselves. In 1990, the new Tech Video Toaster was one of the cheapest digital editing programs available, but even that was still a couple thousand dollars. Nonetheless, despite the difficulty, anime fans continued to produce AMVs in small numbers, and contests started appearing at conventions. In the aughts, AMVs just exploded. Digital editing was finally becoming accessible to hobbyists and home editors, with programs like Adobe Premiere Pro being pricey, but just affordable enough. Plus, the anime industry itself was picking up steam, so more anime than ever was coming to America. You could buy anime on DVDs! Or, with dial-up internet and crappy file sharing programs like Kazaa, it might only take you a couple days to illegally download one episode. As the hobby became cheaper and easier, more people got into it. AnimeMusicVideos.org was founded in 2000 and is still considered the place to go if you want to be an AMV editor. In 2005, YouTube launched, and it did not take long for AMV editors to start uploading there. And that brings us to today, 
where any of these are a pastime shared by anime fans around the globe. Did you know? That in 2020, the Toracon AMV contest received over 20 AMVs from international editors. So speaking of which, let's talk about AMV contests. There's a few standard types of AMV contests that show up at conventions. The first is the quintessential AMV contest. It is where lots of AMV editors will send lots of AMVs to the contests. Usually some staff judges will whittle it down to a selection of finalists and then the attendees vote on which of those finalists are the winners. Then there's Iron Chef AMV contests. The name refers to the really old TV show Iron Chef. On Iron Chef, contestants would have to cook a meal using whatever ingredients they were given, including usually a surprise ingredient that was either very strange or difficult to incorporate into the dish. And the Iron Chef AMV contests work kind of the same way. Some editors show up, get given some random anime, and are told, make an AMV with this in two to three hours. Oh, and by the way, here's a really random bit of footage that must be included in your AMV in some way. For example, in the Toracon 2017 AMV Iron Chef, editors had about five anime to choose from, but also had to include some portion of an Imagine Dragons music video into their AMV as well. Usually the AMVs made in these contests aren't great because the editors are just going as fast as they can to make something at least halfway decent before time runs out, but that's also part of the entertainment. Finally, there's AMV throwdowns, which are actually a type of game show that attendees can participate in. Attendees watch an AMV that uses a lot of different anime sources, and then they take turns naming which anime showed up in the AMV. Attendees get eliminated when they can no longer think of any more anime until only one winner remains. This might sound kind of easy, but it's not. Um, if you remember some of the AMV examples I mentioned earlier, some of them included 40, even 60 or 70 anime in a single AMV. There are other kinds of AMV contests out there and different variations on the contests I've already discussed. Uh, for example, this photo here is from Bakuretsukan 2013's AMV Iron Chef Classic. Basically, it was an AMV Iron Chef competition, but the editors had to use good old linear editing to make their AMVs. Now here's a brief summary of Toracon's AMV contest history. Uh, the first ever Toracon was in 2005, and the convention schedule from that year mentions a music video screening, which I can only assume was referring to AMVs, although I don't know for sure because I wasn't there. Uh, in 2006, we had our first official AMV contest. For several years, we had an AMV throwdown competition. In 2012, my husband Adam, who you've probably seen in other panels with me throughout today, uh, got involved and became the AMV contest coordinator and quickly recruited me to help him out, so that's how I got involved in all this. In 2017, we had a local AMV showcase, which was a special non-contest, non-competition screening of AMVs made just by editors here in New York and some nearby states. And as I alluded to before, in 2017 and also in 2019, we had an AMV Iron Chef as well. And now this year, in 2021, we are having our first online AMV contest ever! So, of course, Toracon 2020 was cancelled, which meant we could not have the AMV contest screening or have attendees vote on the winners. Uh, and it's a real shame because we had already selected the finalists and we have these lovely trophies to give away. Isn't it pretty? So we are going to be screening the 2020 AMV contest on the Twitch stream later today. Please go check it out and use our online voting form to vote for the winners. I cannot wait to see what the results are. So thank you for watching my little panel here today. If you'd like to know more about AMVs or where I got my information from, other than my own head or Adam's head, here are my sources listed. Uh, and once again, Please go check out the 2020 AMV contest today and help vote on the winners. Bye!